This is Mark Mullinax, and I welcome you back to Power for the Peaceful, a podcast and class on Taoism. Today, verse 25, the epic resume. When you listen to the ground and you put your roots down, you can hear what she says if you're listening. When you listen to the ground and you put your roots down, you can hear what she says if you're listening. The sweet sound of the river as she moves over the stones. The same song that the blood in your body sings as it weaves around your bones. When you're listening, when you're listening, are you listening? Horseback on Sunday morning, harvest over, we taste persimmon and wild grape, sharp sweet of summer's end. In time's maze over fall fields, we name names that rest on graves. We open a persimmon seed to find the tree that stands in promise, pale in the seed's marrow. Geese appear high over us, pass, and the sky closes. Abandon, as in love or sleep, holds them to their way, clear in the ancient faith. What we need is here. And we pray, not for new earth or heaven, but to be quiet in heart and in eye clear. What we need is here. Wendell Berry. What we need is here. I am honored to spend time with you again. I seek to demonstrate how Tao still speaks for today. Today's question asker and quote reader is David Willert. David is a biology professor at Chattanooga State Community College. He was trained as a molecular biologist and worked at Oak Ridge National Lab for a spell before transitioning to his true passion of teaching 25 years ago. As you'll learn from his question, he's also an avid sailor. So let's get right into the verse as translated using David's voice. Verse 25, greatness everywhere. Mysterious but complete, pre-existing the universe, arriving soundlessly and formless, alone it endures without change. Whole, complete, untiring, and flowing through everything, it may be considered the universe's womb. If forced to name this, I utter the sound Tao, or worse, the way. Reluctantly, I describe it with the word great. It alone functions everywhere, calling all things back to their single source home. There is not much else to say, except to name four amazing things, Tao, heaven, earth, and anyone connected with Tao. In these four, the universe demonstrates its greatest traits. Know your interconnections. Human beings come from Earth. Earth's patterns entwine with heavens. Heaven roots in Tao. Tao's blueprint is nature itself. For my part, this verse has always been one of my favorites because it saves me it saves me just a little bit each time it appears. I'll try to convey the power of this verse by using metaphors of map, music, or the word verse, as it's used in music, and of time. First, this verse is our map, our original worldview. It starts off in terra incognita, unknown territory, something our earlier map makers called the hic sunt monstra, or the here be monster parts of the map. But the good news is that we can locate ourselves on this map. Whatever situation you find yourself in, it's on the map. That is, we never leave the Taoist map. Today's verse 25 starts off in one of those wondrous, wordless, mysterious, and even mystical places, the kind that makes me kind of want to throw up my hands and shout to the wall, whatever, but, and this is important, before this verse is over, it connects the wondrous and the wordless with the knowable ways of the universe. It links the mysterious 
with the mundane, and the mystical with the knowable, which is a great teaching device. For to learn, link what you know with what you don't know. The known is a portal to the unknown. The unknown guides the known. In singer Paul Simon's phrasing, there are hints and allegations of what we do not know yet within what we do know now. To give you a hint, what is huge, immense, and unknown has natural, intimate connections with all that is known, even ourselves. Consider frequently the connection of all things in the universe and their relation to one another, for things are somehow implicated with one another, and all in a way friendly to one another. Marcus Aurelius In the beginning, there's this verse, to use my second image, or Tao, and the verse flowed and still flows throughout all, for nothing has emerged that was not full of or flowing with this verse. That verse is the song, the original melody of the universe, from which all parts of the universe began in and are ever drawn back in harmony. Each part exists in peace and flows with the harmonies set out by that verse. This verse is in all things. Nothing has ever existed without it. All things flow out of and back into it. This verse is harmony, flow, connection, becoming. It is enough. It is the foundation of justice itself. You might even call this verse justice. That is, in the beginning, there is an original justice to which we are still tied, still interconnected. Only our issue is not that we are alienated from this justice. We have just forgotten our connections with it. There is no place one can go where one loses touch with this harmonic verse, though. This is why this verse is one of my favorites and how it saves me each time. We belong without qualification to every place and every time in which this verse or Tao appears. And Tao appears everywhere at all times. So it is important to spend time in today's verse 25. Scholars of Taoism consider verse 25 to be one of the most significant lessons in the entire manuscript. Yes, there is something amazing and wordless here. Like every verse prior, though, we are invited into this verse to unhitch ourselves from ego-boosted manipulations long enough to rest in the simple truth that there is no need to develop, project, or extend that part of us that is ego. We are already so connected and interconnected with Tao that our efforts to make a separate self apart from Tao, these efforts are like trying to dilute the ocean with our spit. As 20th century philosopher and mathematician Bertrand Russell wrote, In my darkest hours, what has saved me again and again is some action of unselfing, some instinctive wakefulness to an aspect of the world other than myself, a helping hand extended to someone else's struggle, the dazzling galaxy just discovered millions of light years away, the cardinal trembling in the tree outside my window. We know this by its mirror image. To contact happiness of any kind is to be dissolved into something complete and great, something beyond the bruising boundaries of the ego. The attainment of happiness is then less a matter of pursuit than of surrender to the world's wonder, ready as it comes. When you're listening, when you're listening, are you listening? Beneath the fragile screens of our consciousness, this world we schedule into harried and hurried days, measured by some kind of time-is-money algorithm, beneath all this rather needless junk we maintain as somehow important, lies an older universe with its own time, 
and its own sense of the sacred, something we used to call the realm of the gods or the music of the spheres. Here, time, if you can call it time, moves according to ancient rhythms, measured by rhythms like the movement of the galaxies across the heavens, a primal rhythm of the universe which contains the birth and death of galaxies. However, today we measure ourselves by a new time, one kept by relentless clocks and unforgiving calendars. We can get so consumed with one day's emergencies and forget that we are wholly merged within another time. Another rhythm then can be measured by ticks and tocks, calendars, or even atomic measuring devices like cesium chronometers. Tao works the long game in deep time. In this primeval time, there are no alarms, just rhythms. In the rhythms of this ancient, sacred time, we also live, move, and have our being. It's the same rhythm of a forest arising, living, dying, rising again. The same rhythm that brings us from birth into babyhood, childhood, adolescence, sexual maturity, adulthood, and eventual death is of an ancient time cycle. The lesson here? Our bodies do not follow the schedules we may wish, but they follow another rhythm. But forgetting, we may have sold off and denied away our sacred rhythm, just as we have separated ourselves from the ground under our feet by using shoes, architecture, and even air travel. Check out our bonus episode number one on thinkification for more. Rational consciousness is proud to reject and deny these ancient rhythms and their sacred meaning of importance to or impact upon our daily life. The ancient is no longer present in our common wisdom, our common sense, or common life, but we do all interconnect. Like when we notice a mayfly alive for but one day, or a distinctly colored sunflower by the side of the road, just miracles to those with eyes and senses prepared. How a bud breaking open in spring and the leaves falling in autumn both sing together. The universe is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our wits to grow sharper. Eden Philpots, A Shadow Passes All over the sky a sacred voice is calling your name. At the center of the universe dwells the Great Spirit, and that center is really everywhere. It is within each of us. Black Elk One thing we in the West must overcome is the traditional idea that there are several layers of separation between human beings and whatever governs the universe, whether we call that whatever, God, gods, or even the supernatural, even Tao. No, no separation here. Not here. The processes of Tao are nature's, heaven's, earth's, and our own processes. Tao, wherever manifests, models nature itself. We're all in the neighborhood. Just look at our neighbors. Earth, heaven, Tao, nature itself. We're all drawn up in a single garment of origins and destiny, to paraphrase Martin Luther King, Jr. We are all part of this single epic resume of the universe. Getting back into this verse now. After a mysteriously immense hint of what Tao is in the very beginning of this verse, this verse ends by giving us what we in the religion business call an anthropology. That is, where is the human being in the created order? How does this human being relate to the ultimate power or powers in the universe? That is, What is our relation to the gods or God? Is there a kind of pecking order in these relations? Like God on top, humans next to God, and then animals and plants further down the line? When a religion offers an anthropology, it's trying to describe the appropriate ways in that religion's worldview, how human beings are to regard themselves vis-a-vis the divine order, the created order, and towards each other. That's anthropology. So who are we? And how do we connect with this vast and mysterious universe? 
What is Tao's anthropology? This is the very question that drives us in the understanding of this verse, because verse 25 offers us an expansive and liberating anthropology. It's right there in the interconnections passage read here by David. Know your interconnections. Human beings come from earth. Earth's patterns entwine with heavens. Heavens roots in Tao. Tao's blueprint is nature itself. Remember your place, this verse says, but not in a parent telling a child to remember your place. No, remember your interconnections. There's no place one can go, nothing one can think, or no other real condition for the human except this pre-existing natural linkage and interconnection with all, with the earth, with heaven, with Tao, with nature itself. We too are part of the spontaneous Giron or spontaneous timing. We are spontaneously and naturally connected to the origins and justice of the universe, which is, to most worldviews today, revolutionary, radical, and world-shattering. This is not a revelation from above, but a revolution from below, about the intimate interconnection of all things. Everything that is in the heavens, on earth, and under the earth is penetrated with connectedness, penetrated with relatedness. Hildegard of Bingen. You see, everything is an index of everything else. Every possible thing by itself cross-indexes every other possible thing because Tao is of, in, and with all. Each thing, alive or not, is a diplomatic representative to everything else, showing how we each, every, and all reveal Tao and our Tao manifestations. Wherever you go, you will find your teacher, as long as you have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Shunryu Suzuki Roshi this worldview is, in some religious circles today, outrageous, one to be canceled. But in the Tao worldview, this is our status. It's the Taoist anthropology. Know your interconnections. And I imagine, if you stop to think about it, that this is quite the promotion of the created world. It's a worldview without dead things or thingified and commodified beings. There's no hierarchical understanding of higher than or better than, no lower than or worse than. And this saves me. What it does to me is remind me in a quiet confidence that I am a necessary and equal participant partner in a spontaneous creation that gives birth to all there is, from mayflies who live but a day to the first land animals to Mozart. Seen through the lens of Tao, and Dao's Giron spontaneity, there is no fear. Just a simple moment-to-moment -moment reminder that we are in the amazing calculus of the universe itself. We're part and parcel of the family of Dao. When you're listening, when you're listening, are you listening? When you're listening, when you're listening, are you listening? The last two characters in verse 25 are Jiran, which we have seen referenced since verse 17. From the grandest, widest expanses of the universe to what we consider heaven, earth, and human being, it's all Jiran, natural, spontaneous, as it should be, and self-so. Human beings come from earth, Jiran. Earth's patterns entwine with heavens in Jiran ways. Heaven roots in Tao, naturally, Jiran again. And Tao's blueprint is nature itself. Tao follows only what is natural. So, see yourself. See your anthropology included in this great hymn to how all things naturally interconnect. Tao is the way things are, and Tao in you 
is also in touch with the way things naturally are. This is good to remember, to realize anew, and to refresh as often as necessary. The way to understand oneself is to know the immensity, power, and greatness of the universe is everything's heritage. Maybe Tao is like a huge ocean, and I but a cup of water. But both quench, both put out fires, both can satisfy thirst. They are the same, same quality. The only difference is quantity. Our homework. Write out on a post-it note and place in an obvious place these words. Know your interconnections. Human beings come from Earth. Earth's patterns entwine with Heaven's. Heaven's roots in Tao. Tao's blueprint is nature itself. Let's go to David's question. Hi, Mark. Just wanted to start by thanking you for this labor of love, as you call it this beautiful and insightful podcast, and for this opportunity to pose a question. So one of my favorite activities in life is sailing. Hanging on my office wall is a painting of a sailboat, effortlessly moving upwind, slicing through waves, balanced, trimmed, and on course. The painting includes a quote, We can't control the wind, but we can adjust our sails. Alan Watts once said that the Taoist principle of Wu Wei is the art of sailing rather than the art of rowing. I resonate deeply with Taoist philosophy, and yet its principles run counter to so much of our current culture. I feel like a fish swimming upstream. And Wu Wei is definitely not the art of swimming upstream. I don't want to simply retreat from society. In fact, I want to engage with it. So my question how does one best embrace Taoism while swimming in a culture consistently moving in the opposite direction? I am pleased to respond to your great question, David. Another Alan Watts metaphor about life is that of the ballroom dancer. They are not trying to get anywhere on the dance floor. There's no finish line in dancing, no competition to end up somewhere. You move according to the music, without regard to things like progress, finishing, and other such things. Cultures give us deadlines, finishing lines, lines in the sand. But Tao is so countercultural, just laughs at those lines. However, as you correctly observe, David, living in culture can seem so out of tune or feel so out of step with Tao that one feels indeed like one is a fish swimming upstream. I'm not going to ask you, David, to forget the powerful undertow of culture. However, my response is to use verse 25 again. Remember your interconnections and then move among the 10,000 things as one in touch with the unbelievable promotion and confidence that this verse reminds us. We are interconnected with greatness and always are. So move out into the 10,000 things, or culture, as you may call it. Don't worry about going against the grain of culture. Just be yourself. And as you are, as you practice being with Tao, then you become a necessary part or player of that culture. One who can actually transform that culture, that crazy culture. Wu Wei does not avoid culture, but enters it as a pebble on the floor of a river, quietly, slowly changing the course and flow of the stream or culture itself. As I've said elsewhere, we get to influence the, quote, weather, unquote, wherever we are. Bring, like water does, nutrients, healing, softening to a culture so in need of it. Know that when you're in the midst of the culture and see culture's toxic effects, you cannot actively change it by force, for force always responds with counterforce. But David, the seed of Tao is always there. Your connections are already there. You just rejoin them. Our job is to help 
the seeds grow, to make connections of compassion where no one else does. As Thich Nhat Hanh, the late Buddhist monk, said, one compassionate word, action, or thought can reduce another person's suffering and bring them joy. One word can give comfort and confidence, destroy doubt, help someone avoid a mistake, reconcile a conflict, or open the door to liberation. One action can save a person's life or help them take advantage of a rare opportunity. One thought can do the same because thoughts always lead to words and actions. With compassion in our heart, every thought, word, and deed can bring about a miracle. Thich Nhat Hanh also said, When the crowded Vietnamese refugee boats met with storms or pirates, if everyone panicked, all would be lost. But if even one person on the boat stayed calm and centered, it was enough. It shows a way for everyone to survive. So, David, we don't have to let our feelings of being alien to the crazy culture in which we live be the final word or emotion. What happens is we recontextualize to see the seeds of Tao everywhere. When we live amongst the chaos of culture, we create opportunities to change its weather, one person, one day at a time. So serve, don't avoid the culture. Know your strong, unbreakable interconnections because you are exactly what our crazy cultures need. So in the wind, dear sailors, don't worry about controlling it. Just trim your sails to Dallas flow. And you may just find your boat a calm and centered vessel in a rough sea in which others may find refuge. By the way, in our classrooms, this is often exactly what our students need. They need the reminder that they are not what social media says they are. They need reminding of their original interconnections. So just as Thich Nhat Hanh developed an engaged Buddhism, so may we develop an engaged Taoism. We intentionally live among the shit of the world, not to escape it, but to transform that shit into fertilizer, that mud into pottery, that chaos into harmony. Culture will always seem to be a headwind to our progress in Tao, but stay in the water, just tack, turning sails 45 degrees left, then right, then left and right again. In a sea of witless sailors, what happens when you choose to be the calm leader? David, I hope I've done justice to your question. This podcast remains an original labor of love designed, written, and co-produced by so many whose central idea is that Tao Te Ching text and Taoist practices are good news for today. Tao still speaks. David Willard spoke and questioned. Audrey Davis drew. Molly Hartwell sang. Fortress Press holds the copyright for any use of my Tao Te Ching translation. And without you, where would we be? Thank you for your attendance in this class on Taoism. May your days begin in peace and become practices for radical hope. Are you listening?